All right, here we go. Overdrive off and running. TSN 1050 on the TSN app. Your home smart speaker and up on TSN 2. Brian Hayes, the O-Dog Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan. Wednesday afternoon, beautiful day here in Toronto. How are we feeling? How's Did everyone Did you cleanse doing? your soul today? Because you know what, Hazy B? I went out and shot 72, and I cleansed my soul, and I wow. felt great. No, you know what? I had uh, I had a sick child with me all day, and well, she had been feeling under the weather. So today she was home with me, and I was this close to missing the show today, this close to missing the show. <laughs> and there were people tweeting in saying, "Well, you got some news." You know, I'm assuming Hayes won't be there, and uh, surely almost happened. Almost happened. Wow. It was that close <laughs> to happening. It was it was Pittsburgh you losing to remember, Chicago, you guys the whole world what? being different. What had to happen when we were kids to miss school? I didn't oh, have too many sick days. Man. I don't remember them either. I, there I, was no choice because my mom was going to work, my dad was going to work, and you were going to school. Yeah, but yeah. nowadays they send you <laughs> home. And, I mean, obviously we're coming out of a pandemic, so if you had a runny nose or even the sniffles, they were sending kids home left and right, which I get. And, if, you know, we should have. But you're right. Like back in my day, which I'm older than you guys, it. I don't remember missing for sick days. It no. just, you just went. You were, the, I, you were the West Jarvis of going to school. Man. Yeah, that's you right. You just went. Like, that's right. They dropped you off. Uh, and I'm not lying when I talk about, and I know they say, well, you're a dinosaur. You walked uphill six miles both ways, all of that. I did walk to school. I walked through a ravine that was terrifying Like back then when you're like, what, in grade one, you're walking down a ravine, the trees, and you, you know, the, like – some of the things that we used to be able to, because of education, because of everything, things have changed, right? Seat belts, a lot of it's social media, planes. though, too. Right. Right? You see everything, and then you're right. terrified of what's out there in the world. That was always well, now out there if a anyway. kid's walking to school and says, look at this cool ravine I'm going to on the way to school, somebody calls the police and says you're endangering <laughs> your kid walking by the ravine. Right, well, that's exactly. what I'm saying. Like, it just – there were things that we were allowed to do back – I mean – you went out in the morning at 8 o'clock and your parents came and got you at 8 o'clock at night when you were playing up the road or, you know, in the winter it was on the outdoor rink. You just were there by yourself. Like right. it was it was just normal. Nowadays, obviously, supervision, all of that, it, things have changed. But I think back of it, no sick days and really no supervision for a while. No, there. nothing, man, <laughs> nothing. Like I, I, the big story, one of the big stories in the city today is that idiot kid in Scarborough on a bus lighting a, you know, a yeah, fireworks off, uh, which man, is so man. stupid. And and they got it. Someone knows the kid. You can see his clothes. He's got Crocs on. You know, like yeah. he's a kid. He's doing dumb stuff. And at some point, it's going to get out. And I, I'm not here to suggest what should happen what the penalty should be but clearly that's incredibly dangerous yeah but you know i grew up taking i remember being i don't think i would have been more than grade four or grade five and i had carte blanche of the city i was taking the ttc downtown <laughs> buses street cars we were going all over the place you know you in grade four uh, we were no. young like i i don't know if it was that young but definitely by the time i ended elementary school we were going where and it's not that my parents were saying, do that. It was just, we'll see in a few hours, and we'd be like, all right, we're going downtown. You know, like we're bringing yeah. the skateboards down. They didn't know. Parents had no idea. There was no tracing us. As long as we yeah. got home for dinner, for all they knew, we were around the corner. We're yeah. going you know, I mean, you got, and, and We're going downtown. Obviously, let's recognize the time. But I don't know. I think I've told you guys this. I learned to drive when I was 12. Like Which that is was, wild. <laughs> like that is absurd when you think about it. It is a little bit. All of my uncles told me they drove to get their license. Yeah, well, I did too. <laughs> I drove to get my license. My yeah. mom threw me the keys and said, go get your license. You're 16. So I drove. But I had been driving for years because uh, at 14, you could get your learner's permit. My brothers are older than me. So there were times where... You know, I'd get a phone call at 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm sleeping. I'm 14. My brother would be like, come pick me up. You got to come get me. South side of Abbott, 45-minute drive. I'm driving <laughs> to pick up him and his buddies to take him through the McDonald's drive-thru. Yeah. Like, it's just, it's insane. Like, that, the That's things wild. that we were allowed to do back exactly. then. Exactly. Obviously, you would never do that No nowadays, one's condoning just, that type of activity. No. No one's suggesting I mean, it should happen. But, no, but like it was I, just Again, weird. fireworks on the bus, that's crazy. Yeah. But I, we were on buses all the time and streetcars and, and rowdy and loud and stupid. 
Yeah. And never anything to that extent. But the, I, it's almost shocking that no one from the TTC at any point said, you guys cannot do that. You can't be on here anymore. You know, and back when it used to be you put the money in the little slot and then they people would just throw change in and run. You yeah. know, and then all of a sudden <laughs> everyone's through. The guy's trying to count the amount of money. He's like, all right, just go. Tenny you get in for like a dollar seventy four. You know, because it's all pennies and dimes and nickels and you know, that's uh, now everything's uh what is it, the pesto, I think. Is it presto or pesto? I don't even know. They got cards, presto card. Oh, Thank you, yeah, JP. Yeah, exactly. JP's a man of the city. JP knows what's up. He would know all that. Yes, yeah, and I guess Brad Dre Living needs to know all this kind of stuff. So are we going to exactly. catch Dre Living on the TTC? Is he going to be one of those guys, you know, a man of the people, right, jumping on the uh, TTC, maybe he lives in Yorkville, jumps on at, uh, you know, I don't know, Wellesley or College or Blue or whatever and says, I'll, I'll see you downtown. I think we're going to see, well, see everything's Brad new. kicking around the TTC. I don't know. Uh, AZB, new GM, Brad Tree Living. What are your thoughts? Well, I think it's highly predictable. He has been the one that's been in the front of the line for like a week and a half, right? Like it's right. it would have been a real shock if all of a sudden a press release came out and it was, you know, Steve Eiserman's leaving Detroit and he's coming up here to pair up with Shanahan. Like then you're talking shockwaves. I, I think thought there been... was the opportunity for that, by the way. I just thought there was the opportunity for something to come out of left field that nobody was expecting. I thought that possibly could happen. Well, and who knows who Shanahan was calling? Who knows? You know, the reports are out indicating he never talked to anyone in St. Louis about Doug Armstrong. Um, so that didn't go anywhere. But that doesn't mean he didn't call other teams or other GMs. He's got a million friends in the league. Like Shanahan's been in the league for, for over 30 years. He knows everybody. Uh, but it was always it always felt like True Living was in the front of the line, um, that he w- it was pushing in that direction. And it was, you know, his job to, to lose effectively. And obviously he, he did not do that. Um, it checks boxes that Shanahan clearly was looking for. GM of experience. He's been a GM in Calgary for nine years. He was an AGM in Arizona for a long time. He's been in the league and in front offices for almost two decades. So he's very comfortable with that. He's worked in the Canadian market. Like all this kind of stuff we know that I, I think would be appealing to Shanahan. I, I think what I'm intrigued by is, you know, how different – is his vision compared to what maybe Dubis would be looking at? Right. How much input is Shanahan still going to have on all this? Because that's a big part of what's come out the last couple of weeks, right? All of a sudden leaks coming out, e- even the way it was announced today, not very leafy. Y- you know, the way the Leafs have operated for, for about five, maybe nine years is press release out of nowhere, email. It's even if it's a guy you expect, right? Dregs broke it last night. Dreg said it's going to be tree, it, like tree living's coming, and then everyone else jumping on board, and then all of a sudden it's almost like the Leafs were like, I guess we might as well just get it out there. You know, like <laughs> the whole world already knows. There's no point in us pretending like we're holding back information here. That has not been the way it's consistently been run here. Um, you know, reports about what Shanahan's been saying to players and other management types, that kind of stuff hasn't been out there a lot in the past. All of a sudden yeah. you're kind of getting a read on where Shanahan comes into play here. So I'm curious on that front. And then – you know, as Noodles, you've been talking a lot about this. Oh, you've jumped on board with it. Yes, Trey Living was in Calgary, and yes, he was in Arizona. This is a different beast. This is. In, in terms of the market, in terms of the history, in terms of the amount of resources as well. Like, yeah. he, he is going to come in here and possibly have the ability to completely reshape the way the whole place operates. I don't know if that's his plan, oh, but I, don't I think know you if have he's to brace get for that. into the way the whole place operates because – Regardless of what's gone on in the ice, and they've won one round in a long time, they might have other things that function smoothly that are that don't need to be changed. I and agree. I like Brad a lot. I've always respected and appreciated the way he went about his business. He seems like a great guy. You talk to any hockey people, they'll always say that's a great hockey guy. And I'm glad he got the job. But the, just the one thing I hope is just, just some honesty. And I think in this market, you guys can both agree – the one thing that's expected and the one thing that's mandatory is you just tell the truth. Like you yeah. can't just skirt around things and lie and say we're this, we're that because people aren't stupid. They're very smart hockey people and they know what the hell's going on. And I just hope that there's some kind of different twist on it, maybe something stronger than a twist, a different look. And just in 
an honest assessment of what he thinks has gone on here and what he thinks needs. And I'm not saying he needs to agree with my ideology on what needs to happen for a team to be successful and have playoff success because that's probably not going to happen. But just just to say, you know what, for things to go forward and get where we want to be, maybe this has to happen. Because if he just comes out and says, we're trucking along here and we're going to keep throwing this thing out there, I think that's a big time mistake. I, I the one thing that I and I wasn't lying. We did our, you know, the mock GM interview yesterday, but the one thing that I think is advantageous here, this is a guy who certainly knows the market and respects the market, but he he didn't grow up here. By all accounts, I don't know if he was a Leaf fan growing up. And I I said it yesterday, it's more about this is a different set of eyes coming in. You know, sometimes when you're in the eye of the storm, you fall in love with your players, you fall in love with your, the idea, you get a little bit caught up in the whole, you know, we'll call it madness of, of how big this market can be, overwhelming, all of these types of things. You've got two fresh set of eyes. Yes, smart hockey man. Yes, he's got his work cut out for him, all of that type of stuff. There's no doubt about that. But you've got a fresh set of eyes that has... Watched in a Canadian market, but in a smaller Canadian market, Calgary compared to Toronto, but knows what it's like to function in in Canada. But also, he's going to walk into the resources, expectations, but he might have a different view uh, of watching the Leafs and playing against the Leafs and going, man, you know, if I had this team, tweak this, tweak this, I think there's a a real winner there, something. So I I think people should be excited about you know, a different, it's not recycling somebody who had been there, been here, somebody that, you know, loves the Leafs so much that maybe they might be blinded. It's more of an outside pair of eyes that is going, hey, I'm going to step in and I've got some great resources here. And it's not like they've overturned anything. He's got AGM still there and Brendan Shanahan's still there. There's a lot of consistent. Brandon Pridham's going to, you know, from my all accounts, be there, but likely knows? be there. Who knows if he changes things? But the point being is he's got all these resources that, he can step into and go. Okay, what does this look like? Now he's the, the problem is is he's got, he's jumping into a hornet's nest because he's got so much to deal with in such a short amount of time. So yeah. that's well, the and, concern. Yeah, and and listen, we until we hear from him tomorrow, um, you know, and and he's not going to give you a full breakdown of the the blueprint, you know, on a one year, three year, five year plan. Right. And he still likely needs time. He does need time to evaluate the organization, find out who he's working with, and find out what he has. I'm sh- I, I'd be willing to guarantee it. I think we all know this. He's been doing that diligently for probably two weeks, right? right. Since since it became a job that was available, and since Shanahan called him, I'll bet you got off the phone and said, "Send me every piece of information you have, and let me look over everything." So. Right. He's not partying today and then showing up tomorrow saying, okay, where's my pass card? Like, let's exactly. let's go in and see what's up. This yeah. guy, Brad Trey Living, has been chipping away for weeks now. And now that he's officially in the door, now he can really allow that to flourish. But I, I agree with your assessment of who he is and what he represents. My question is, will he be allowed to represent that? Because everything you just described, Noodles. Right. Hometown guy, his people, his leaves. He loves them. You know who you just described? Brandon Shanahan. Brandon Shanahan. Yeah. Brandon Shanahan. And we will find out what tree living is all about if Shanahan allows him to do that. Now, maybe they see eye to eye on things. Maybe he isn't coming in here. Like, genuinely coming in here with some big plan of explosion or, you know, whatever it has to be. Right. But there have been a lot of reports, again, very different in Leafland all of a sudden, that Shanahan called the core four and said, if it's up to me, kind of want you to come back, that Shanahan was basically intimating to prospective GMs, I kind of like this Keith guy. I wouldn't mind you know, keeping him around. If that's the case, what's the point of having a GM? Like if Shanahan's just saying, you're keeping the four and Keith's coming back, what the hell is Trey Living even going to do? Like – it's not going to feel different, is my point. Like, it's going to be effectively the same team. Yes, some pieces will come and go naturally. Whoever well, wants the cup, that guys happens, come back and the coach comes back, what the hell would feel different? Nothing. Well, That's the whole point. You, like, the, the team, it's, especially, you can add Riley on that, too. You're talking the five highest contracts, the five longest standing players, the five marquee representatives, and the coach. I'm right. sorry. If it's just tree living for Dubas and those guys come back, in terms of the ice in the room, it's the same team. And Shan- yeah. if that's from Shanahan, 
then Trey Living's showing – again, he may want that anyway. Like, Trey Living right. may believe in that anyway, or he may be convinced into believing that, and then it's on him to work. That's the nature of the job, right? right. If, the, if you got a boss, like that's – he's not immune to that. Every single person in business has to step up to the plate in that situation. But if those are the marching orders, what is Trey Living going to do? It was just the same team, effectively, because Shanahan wants it that way. Let me paint a picture here, because I I look at it in a different way. Not from what you're saying, Brian, because if that's the marching orders and he just has to execute, then it is what it is. But just even reading between Brendan Shanahan's comments in his presser saying, I want a veteran GM who's not shy to be bold. Like, uh, the word bold, that is trading a core four player. That is changing the look or the feel of what's going on with that group that I'm talking the team, mm-hmm. not the organizer, the team. And it, 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 by all accounts, yeah, Brandon Shanahan could call up and say, core four, love you. You're staying. If I had my choice, right. you're not, you're not going anywhere. But the, the caveat is the manager makes the deals, not the president on paper. Right. Mm-hmm. So if he ends up doing the, you know, Masai to DeMar, and he said, hold on a second, you call me. Well, the new manager wanted to do right. that, not could me. Could be a good cop, bad cop situation. It could be. Again, I, I, I want to see how this all unfolds. The other part about this, too, guys, is obviously everyone, Austin Matthews' deal is front and center. No, You know, everyone knows that. But William Nylander is interesting for me because I don't know. I don't know if that will get done immediately. And if that doesn't get done immediately... It might take a little bit, again, for a new manager to come in, get the lay of the land, and then start to look at options to go, well, if I can't get this guy, you know, sorted out, I might have to do something. And if not, maybe I do get him sorted out, but I still want to change the landscape. Like, I think it's not a blank canvas because you've got the framework of a good team there, Mm -hmm. but it is, you know, you still have to put your vision on that team. And I'm I'm really curious of what that is going to be. Right, of course. And there's moving parts. There's a lot of UFAs. There's a, you know, there is some cap space for sure. Yeah. But, you know, the cap's going to go up. Yet if Matthews is going to get a new deal, who knows what that looks like. If Willie resigns, he's going to get more money. You know, all of this is. is <laughs> it's just. That's the truth. I just can't we're... even hear those guys eating up any more money. Matthews well, they, is they... a different animal. He do, like he can. But eat it shouldn't up be much stuff. more. I, I I understand that people are bracing. It's ridiculous this idea that this guy is just. You know, now I'm back up again. Pay me. You know, the idea of the players, you know, holding the team hostage again. Got to stop. Like, it, give it, me a break. Well, maybe it, they but, didn't learn anything. But again, if the team operates this way, that everyone just keeps coming back, then why why would they not? feel like everything's all good you know like yeah. hey this work you guys are gonna do it again sure why wouldn't we go back well, to the well you got it to me up. last time and also you've got to you got decisions to make you know for example we talked about matt murray's situation that's a 4.8 million dollar goaltender sure. that that was your number three by the end based that on can't play who literally can't well, play not again one year left so you got to sort that out but but those are the types of things that might be item 43 on Brad Tree Living's list based on what he needs to do in an organization. But, you know, as of whatever time that was, like, he's in one. He's on the clock. That's yeah. basically again, what it is. I, right? I think it is important to point out, you know, like it's st- you're still walking into a team that is very good. Yes, yeah. the, yes, haven't reached the mountaintop and have stubbed their toe in the playoffs. He's not taking over a team that had 64 points last year and is a complete disaster. Like, it's not even close to that. And at, and this is where, you know, you talk about expectations and pressure that's on him. It's The pressure is on him to keep that level of consistently in the, in the regular season, right. but add in terms of playoff potential, right? Like, that that is a very different job than someone stepping in and saying, all right, we got a mess here, well, or we got to reload, or we got to rebuild, or we're going to have well, to blow I- it up. Like, it's nowhere close to that. He's stepping in to a very different situation than – Lamorello did when he first got here, and I'd argue different even than when Dubas first got here. Um, so, you know that that's the expectation is is keep it rolling, but like tweak, possibly big name tweaking, right? That's but what not I mean. like hey, shave off you know twenty points in the regular season and and roll the dice because we're aiming for a, a three year plan. Florida like this type guy's, of finish at 92 points. Exactly. Like this guy's stepping in, tree living. Next year, if they come back with these same guys, it's cup or bust again. Like you're the new GM of a team that's cup or bust. Yeah. So 
Well, and I, I think guess, he'll relish that, like as a competitive guy, and it's been around for a long time. Obviously, that's why he's taking the gig. I'm not telling him anything he doesn't know. I, do, I just but, think it's funny here that you see a lot of jackasses online going, this is a massive downgrade. What, where? Like, what, what, what did Kyle Dubas do? We can't. We got to stop. Land. We got to stop giving a platform to morons on Twitter. Well, Who cares is, what they just, say? But the point being is, is you know, Kyle Dubas is a good GM, and he's move, he will move on, and he's a good guy, all of that type of stuff. But like, it's not like Dubas won the cup and asked for a massive, you know, massive uh, pay raise, and they didn't want to give it to him. It's you got one round, you built a team, you were. You were stubborn with the core four. You stuck with them. You paid them. You've had nothing but resources at your fingertips. Like somebody else is st- sitting in that chair. Like, yeah. That's basically what it is. I think the my under, my kind of read on the situation is, you know, generally you get into a scenario like this. It's either like big game hunting where, right. again, it's like Iserman's coming up and it's a shock to the world or it's some, you know, progressive, new aged online famous hockey guy that has this whole new vision and none right. of them can look you the, the online the, those guys can't look you in the eye and have a relationship like that's the that's problem why, that I'm, I'm not, I'm not with. referencing anyone in particular i'm just well, saying. i'm referencing some people that i've seen being floated i've met those people like it, they, right they're good at as agms because they're not good at managing people that's sure. that's what i'm saying and that doesn't come up enough is that it's not simply about what you're putting on the ice it's how right. you're you you got to run a whole operation. You're talking scouting staffs. You're talking different, you know, departments. You're talking agents and chatting with right. them and negotiating. All that kind of stuff has to be factored in. I think what Trey Living kind of represents is kind of like a – it's kind of in the same ballpark as Dubas, I, I think. Exactly. Like it's just I consistent. There's no – there's nothing uh, controversial. You know, there's, there's nothing that's on his resume where you say, man, that is really – like that's ugly or – there's nothing like that. It's just he's he's been operating. He's been doing a good job. He hasn't won either. Like right. to be fair, exactly. to Kyle or anyone else, it's not like Trey Living's coming in here with three rings. So Agreed. he's got to prove. Now this is a big opportunity for him, too, right? Like now you got the pick of the litter. Now you got the most resources in the league. Nothing really comes close. No. What are you going to do with it? And I'm intrigued to see what he's got. Like I'm really yeah. intrigued. Then you look at the way, you know, he's he's dealt. A lot of people pointing this out, like you look at Calgary, he's put a real emphasis on defense, on size on the back end. Like they've been a big, nasty defense core for a while out there. Um, you know, it makes you wonder how he's going to look at certain players on this team and and what is his philosophy. That's what I'm intrigued be. by, Hayes, how he looks at it and how he views on it and what moves well, forward from that. Because there's no – when you really break it down – there's just no way he views it the same as what it's been here the last five no. or six years. There's just no well, damn way. And and and, and you, you wouldn't know, hire him. I don't think they'd hire him if he did see it that way. What's you know why well, do that? Well, yes, you gotta I mean, have you want you want some sort of new view, some sort of new philosophy. But that's, that's going to be applied. With, that comes with the new eyes. And like I say, you know, it's a scenario where like a guy like Justin Hull, who was really polarizing. He was Dubas's guy. He won in the minors right. for him, signed him kind of late bloomer, all of that, stuck with him. You know, there's no allegiance. This is where every guy in that dressing room should be on notice because there's no – Brad Tree Living didn't sign any of these deals, draft and develop them, so he doesn't know them. The relationship starts today. And, you know, some guys have to reestablish themselves of how important they are to the organization. And there isn't, hey, you know, this guy – Played for me here, you know the Sault Saint Marie connection. Like, hey, this guy, you know Michael Bunting, guys like that. It's it's you know Bunting's a U of A, so I don't even know if he's in the. But there's a good but, example. Like, exactly. you know, Dubas may have been more. I obviously he's more connected to Bunting, where True Living won't won't have that, and that applies, you know, with every player, especially the guys, you know, at the top. Like I look at a guy like Morgan Riley, who I don't think they should be looking to move off. But you never know what what a new player, what a new GM may may think of that contract, of right. where he's at in his career, you know how he plays on the defensive side of things, you know in terms of the amount of minutes he's going to eat up. Um, these these are yet to be determined. He's obviously pitched that to Shanahan, and Shanahan was intrigued enough by it where he said, "Okay, I'm in. Let's go," right. uh, and we'll we'll get answers starting tomorrow. Uh, Tree living, and I, I believe Shanahan will be speaking with him. But we got Brian Burke coming up at five. Burke knows Tree Living from Calgary, right? Yeah. Knows him very well from their days in in Calgary. So we'll get Brian on to basically describe 
what is coming to Toronto? What what is what is Trey Living possibly going to do differently than than you know Dubis, et cetera? And uh, what exactly you know is he all about? Because Brian Burke knows him really well. So Brian's coming up just after five o'clock. Role play level of concern making a return Ooh. in about an hour. We've Not got bad. tickets to give away to the RBC Canadian Open. we got picks to get to today, brought to you by TaylorMade. The Memorial this week, big one. big A lot of, lot of Ryder Cup talk going on now. Oh, sudden, now Rory. So. Rory had some outrageous comments saying, you know what, I think Brooks Kepka should be on the U.S. Ryder Cup team, which is a dumb comment because he, he's going to help crush Europe. But he said the live guys in Europe, they don't deserve to play. Yeah. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about, man? No kidding. You wonder why you're stressed out and you got all this stuff on your plate? It's because of comments like that. Just let you, You're on the Ryder Cup team. Leave it at that. Right. Well, he, and- what, it, what has happened here is he understands that people are loving his openness with the media and he gives them something. He always has something to say. That's the big thing about Rory. So guess what he's doing? He's saying it. More and more and more, and he keeps digging a hole and burying himself in it. And he's had enough, but he keeps doing it. Well, he just made a, a pledge, I believe, at the PGA where he said, I'm not doing it anymore. And then two weeks doing later, what? He's not talking. talking anymore. Like, yeah. remember, oh. at, at the PGA, he said, I don't <laughs> want to get into it, guys. I'm, I'm tired of it. I just want to let bygones be bygones, effectively. And then two weeks later, he's he's back. <laughs> he can't. He loves to talk. Like yeah, Rory, and that's so why that. he is a media darling because he is he's thoughtful. He speaks his mind. I love it. You know, I I can't fathom. I don't understand why Cap Capco would be cool and the European guys wouldn't be. I don't I don't quite understand that. That's clearly about. That means it's personal more so with them. But I also think he's boys with Kepka, right? Like he's been in the states for a long time. I think him and Kepka are both that. Is it the Bear Trap or Bears Club or whatever? Yeah, Bears Club. Yeah, I think they're right. but I think they're really close, and and I think he, he wants to prop up Kepka, and I think with the European guys, you know, he he's not as big of a fan. Clearly. But dude, it's just that ultimately is a stupid comment because they're not going to just make an exception for one side, not. not the other. Like, of course come on. not. And Rom just came out and said, "Let them all go," and I think that's the play. It's softening. Who cares anymore? Like majors and Ryder Cup. Just have the best players. Beyond that, right. who cares what Liv's doing? Who cares what the PGA is doing? Pick your side and move on, right? That's yep. that's the way it should be. And I get the impression it's moving in that direction, but we'll see. Um, all right, Brian Burke coming up in about a half an hour. Jay's back in action tonight. Alec Manoa on a mound. How about our boy Yusei Kikuchi gets Ooh. a standing O last night. Played it's 500 five, strikeouts. 500 career strikeouts. Standing O for Kikuchi. I never saw, thought I'd see the day. Um, and obviously the Jays went big last night. Nate Pearson had another great appearance. Vladdy with a few hits. There's a there's a prop up on FanDuel we'll tell you about. But Vladdy, home runs, and the Dome. It's, it says a lot about what's going on with him in terms of the power. So we'll get to that a little bit later this afternoon. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 2. All right, we'll get to our PJ picks brought to you by the TaylorMade later this hour. PGA makes its way down to Muirfield Village. Uh, we got Brian Burke coming up in a half an hour. Get uh, Brian's take on Brad Tree Living getting the gig here in Toronto. And, um, you know, we'll hear from, from Tree Living tomorrow. We'll hear from Shanahan. We'll see what he's willing to say. I think I think the main questions tomorrow will be probably about Sheldon Keefe. I think that's one of the first yeah. two or three. Like, what are you going to do with the coach? And we'll see if he gives an answer on that. If he's definitive about him coming back, then I, you'll take that to the bank. If he leaves the door open, which I would assume he will do anyway, just say, hey, I'm just getting here. I got to evaluate. Then I guess, you know, anything's possible at that point. Um, and then, you know, relationship with Shanahan, core four, Matthews. Like, it, it feels like the Matthews stuff is moving in that direction. Like, I, I don't sense there's a lot of anxiety, like, about – him bluffing them or him, you know, not being serious about an extension, but we're going to find out just over a month, right? It's June one tomorrow. So we're, we're a month away from go time, July 1st. But that you're right. Like, I think it, I don't want to say foregone conclusion. It just sounds like he wants to stay and hasn't changed. So now it's just a matter of putting a contract together, you know, and, and, and obviously you're going to battle on both sides, numbers, term, all of that. But you know, you could, probably safely say he's going to be in a Leafs uniform for the next couple of years for sure. So, right. you know, that, that the bottom line is 
you can bank on that. Now you've got to build your team around that. And, you know, you've got some. I don't think anything's for sure these days. Well, you're right. Again, he might wake up and say, hey, I met met somebody that lives in L.A. I want to be traded there. But I doubt it. I think it's more he wants to be here. And it's just a matter of money and term. Really, yeah. get that sorted out. Well, and that'll be different, you know, considering what, what happened with Kachuk in Calgary, which was not Trey Living's decision. If I'm, I think we all know he wanted to sign Kachuk. He would have never flipped them, but he, he felt he had to when, when Kachuk said, I'm not signing here, so basically get rid of me. And then the Goudreau stuff was different. Goudreau was a UFA, which Matthews will be in a year. Right. But, you know, Trey Living will be walking into a different situation if Matthews, you know, agrees to term and signs the deal – then he's working under, you know, a very different situation than the one he found himself in a year or two ago, uh, in in Calgary. But uh, yeah, we'll find out more tomorrow. And again, Brian Burke in about a half an hour. Yeah, and Hayes, you look at that situation. The reaction to what happened in Calgary, regardless if it worked out or it didn't, that's a pretty good pivot from a general manager, if you ask me. Like, as soon as a guy comes to you and says, I'm not signing here, your two best players basically said, I don't want to play here. And he had to make something happen pretty quickly. And you can't argue with what he did on paper as far as a reaction to what right. he was told. Like, well, exactly. Just, like, I, this year it didn't work out, but it, it's, you know, that doesn't mean Huberto didn't have 115 points when they acquired him. Or Nazem Kadri didn't have almost 90 in a cup and was unbelievable. You yeah. know, and, and Uyghur is a good play. Like, all those, it, they were smart plays. They were the right play. It just, for year one, it didn't work. It could all work next year, right? Maybe Huberto takes back off. Uyghur, Kadri, they all put it together. Markstrom stands on his head, and all of a sudden the Flames are good. Guess what? That's Brad Tree Living's team. Well, you, know? you look at the, the term of it, you're right. Like, right now, that's what I saw trending on. Oh, we got, you know, got a GM that is good that traded away the Conn Smythe winner. Yes, like, on paper, that's what it looks like. And that's what is going to be this year. But you look at the life of the contract. I mean, Jonathan Huberto right now should be working out and focusing on next season because he had a terrible season first year with the Calgary Flames. But I, I think we all expect him to be a lot better next year. He's going to have a different setting, different coach. You know, you can't use the coach crutch. You're gonna you're gonna have a new coach. Right. So you're gonna have to you're gonna have to produce in that situation too. So. You know, let's let's see how it works out here because again, you can go revisionist history and go, hey, that trade didn't work out for Tree Living. That did. it's what he does here, and he's got a lot of work to do here. Exactly, and that applies to every GM. If you're yeah. a GM in the league for a long time, you make very good plays, you make big mistakes, yeah. and if you make so many mistakes that that becomes your reputation, you won't work anymore. Like Shanahan isn't a dummy. He's not going to hire this guy thinking, man, that was a real screw up. This wasn't good. Like obviously he was impressed with the process and impressed with Trey Living, and and that's why he's here. Right. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll see. And and again, Berkey will join us in about about a half an hour. Pierre LeBron later this afternoon on on kind of how this all came together. Alec Manoa back on the mound tonight, and like it just feels different when what he's are you pitching, expecting man. what are you expecting I, honestly I'm, I'm expecting a poor outing if i yeah. want to oh, no. I, I don't want to feel that way noodles like i yeah, prefer I not I to don't. but this guy has been consistently struggling like he, he had a good outing against baltimore a couple of starts ago but um For the, the last most time part, you're him, talking about him coming out of the game after the fourth haze right that's it like the total <laughs> I, i'd be curious what FanDuel has that at you know is it four and a half five like that's That'd be, that says something if, if his total innings tonight is any around is around four, four and a half. Like that that says all you need to know that, you know, the books are telling you they're not expecting much. Right. Because he's throwing way too many pitches. We've all detailed the stats. He throws more pitches per inning than any starter in baseball. He's not striking guys out. He's walking a lot of guys. And you know, I, I'm I'm pulling for him because I, I like what he represents. I love what he's done in the past. I didn't see this coming. I'm not suggesting I saw it coming. But at this point, it's been so ugly, and, and there's so much data and sample size. It's difficult to envision, you know, seven strong outings tonight, one earned, keeps the ball in the park, seven, eight strikeouts. Like, that is difficult to see. Meanwhile, I can see, you know, 85 pitches through three innings, bunch of walks, bunch of hits, and leaves, and the Jays are down 5-2, you know, because I've, we've seen that so many times. Yeah. Well, so 
Let's hope yeah, he has he, a. He's got know, to get it together. Home field, get excited. You know, great weather. It's a little hot, though. A little too hot. I'll, oh, I'll perfect complain about weather. it. Perfect hey, so what I'm worried about is, like, what the hell could Schneider? He's gone through the, we love this guy's competitiveness. He cares. He's going to get it right. He's doing all the right. Like, you get to a point where it's you run out of things to say. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, go talk to him. <laughs> yeah, I, I agreed. I mean, Schneider is going to speak after every game. But what if it goes south again, there's nothing more to be said. I mean, they're, they're, he's working. They're working with him. They're, they're trying to put him in a position to succeed. Um, and, you know, it's on him to simply do it. And, and not only one start. Like, for him to return to form, we're talking this guy for, for like a big month, right? Like, get through the end of June and say, all right, that, it looks like Manoa again, right? Because that's happening with different players. Like, Kirk's starting to hit a little bit more. Uh, Springer's starting to get it going. Like, guys who have had slow starts – it still is May 31st. You still have a very good chance to have a very positive impact on the season, but it, it's got to accumulate over four, five, six, seven starts where all of a sudden you, you can erase the past and realize, okay, something clicked here. Um, and speaking of something clicking, Nate Pearson, again, a couple innings last night, really clean. Um, this guy's striking out a lot of guys. He's not he's keeping the ball in the park. I think he's given up one home run since he's been up here. He's got a 169 ERA. The grappler's boy, Nate Pearson. Randy Johnson. Well, I mean, he was the number, like the unanimous number one prospect in in the organization. He was legitimately one of the, you know, top ten prospects in baseball and was expected to be, you know, like a, a Verlander type, Clemens type, big monster, throws heat, challenges guys, throws a bunch of innings every year. That's obviously gone. You know, but I credit this guy for grinding. I credit the Jays for still seeing something there because this is a scenario where if he wasn't highly touted, they would have cut him years ago, right? They would have cut him and said, go find it somewhere else. And then if and when he found it somewhere else, you'd say, why didn't you stay committed to him? And they continue to give him opportunities. But, man, he looks good. He looks good. Like he's, he's, He looks like he legitimately could be a high-leverage arm. Yeah, and, and that's what they need maker, out of the bullpen. And if you need a big out, a, like what I like, I like that big monster coming yeah. out. I don't know why. It just seems like they're more intimidating. They throw harder and they get guys out. Yep, that's modern baseball, man. If you don't have it, like you, you know, you can bring Simber out and he can do, he can throw yeah. the way he throws. And but and that's prime be like Kenley Jansen, that dude when he was on back yeah. with the Dodgers, like that's a nasty dude up there. Right, you get a guy out there that's big. And, and challenging and just throws smoke at you and says, come hit it, man. And, and chances are you're not going to. Isn't that what Manoa is supposed to be? <laughs> that, that is what Manoa is. <laughs> like he's, like a, a big, giant, threatening human, yes. which, you know, we saw last year, yelling at the players, like swagger, like throwing smoke. And that's not smoke, the disposition like, of, of Pearson. He doesn't seem like a guy that's interested in confrontation or anything like that. No, he looks like Nuke Lelouch up there. He, he does have a Nuke Lelouch kind of vibe, but he's just – Listen, you add him to to Romano, to to Swanson. Mazes had a great year. Like all of a sudden, you start adding a few arms where you start to put together a bullpen. You add a piece or two at the the deadline, and and maybe the Jays have something cooking here. So it, it's still early. He's only I think he's got 16 innings pitched on the season, which again is a small sample size. But he's here, and he's certainly here to stay for the foreseeable future. And that's just a cool story seeing Pearson kind of persevere and get through. Um, all right, Brian Burke in, in about 20 minutes. Role play level of concern at 5.30. We'll come back. we got our golf picks brought to you by TaylorMade still to come. Al Pacino's in the news. We'll tell you why. <laughs> Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. All right, Brian Burke coming up in about 15 minutes. Role play level of concern at 5.30. Get to our PGA picks brought to you by TaylorMade. The Memorial this week. Big tournament. Jack Nicklaus, he'll be in the booth doing his thing. All right. He's he hates live golf. Well, he just said it's not a thing. They're not a part of the sport anymore, basically. And he's a PGA guy through and through, obviously. And he hosts a PGA Tour event. That golf so, course, by the way, the like where that course is played, mm-hmm. it is a bucketless track. Yes, it looks it, so epic. Oh my God! The first time I stepped on that property greens to die. I don't care how good you anyone thinks their greens are. Go play that golf course. Yeah. It is outrageous. <laughs> the creeks just kind of shifting their way through the whole place. And 
Remember John Rahm a couple years ago testing positive when he had a six shot lead going and being into Sunday? pulled off on the seventh hole or something. A guy tapped oh. him on the shoulder and said, "Hey man, you might have. Co- I think you tested positive for yeah, COVID. You're out. See you later." Like, like that, looking back on that, crazy. He, he was walking outside. Yeah. Couldn't they say keep your distance from your playing partner? Don't shake his hand after the round, and well, you're going to win one point eight million dollars. Yeah, I mean we were living in a very different world, obviously back then. I know, Could but he looking Sue back or something? on not Sue, but like should he have no. got like, you know what I mean? You just you're on the road to getting that money, and Those you get were the pulled rules. off. I Those understand the rules. The rules. He won but the U.S. Like, Open like a week late, two weeks later. Remember, yeah, he, he, he won at uh, Torrey Pines like two weeks later. But you're, you're right. Listen, noodles. You would think. Someone might look at that and say, wait, but they all had to test, and then the tests were. Those remember, were the rules. You're right. Those buddy. were the rules. And it was like, well, if you're positive, it's, sorry, there's nothing we can do. You're out. Because he easily right. could have been trunk slamming and leaving anyway. He happened to be winning the tournament. He could have been T43, and no one would have cared. They would have just said, oh, there goes right. Rom. Who cares? But not only was he leading, he had a massive lead. Like, he was destroying that golf course. And I want to say Cantley won. Wasn't it Cantley Morikawa in a playoff? And I think Cantley. It ended up being an epic Sunday because Rom left. <laughs> like it just they took the guy who was running away with it, and all of a sudden there were like ten people in contention. It sucks for him though. Oh, like that's two million bucks that might have been staring him in the face there. Which is wild. He's made so much money since then. Like he's made made tens of millions of dollars. Yeah. Yet not only did he miss out on the you know one point eight million or whatever, he got nothing. Like, there wasn't like a, we're going to pull you here. We're still going to give you 25% of the purse. He got zero. <laughs> you got zero. Go just fly go yourself home. home. How many was he up? Did you just mention how I many? I think it was, was a six-shot lead. Oh, at least. Yeah, he, oh, was, he was crushing lapping the field. everyone. Crushing everyone. Like, guys are coming off the course on the Saturday. They're like, well, Rom's obviously got that. You know, we'll fight for T5. Like, guys were just admitting <laughs> that this guy, because he was at the top of his game. Clearly, and then two weeks later, he won at Torrey Pines. Like, he was in rock star ROM mode. Unbelievable. Wild. Well, I saw – I think today was was the, I guess, two-year anniversary of the uh, the least losing to the Habs in Game 7 in the bubble. Ugh. And, yeah, and that – like, that feels like way longer ago. I Honestly, to me, I don't know what you guys think. That feels like it was six years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it just does. there's no one in the remember they allowed like five hundred people in the building. Yeah, the nurses, frontline people, wasn't it? Yeah, frontline, frontline workers uh, and all the coaches workers. are wearing masks. Montreal just, allowed fifteen hundred or three thousand, then oh, yeah. Toronto just, said we're letting five hundred in. Yeah. Remember Lottery. Montreal had that bar that was inside, outside. People were just spilling everywhere. It was like right. Yeah, nothing to see here, folks. People were just everywhere. Yeah. Everywhere. That was that was only two years ago. Only two years ago when the Leafs lost uh, at home in game seven. So um, someone just sent in a picture of uh, Al Pacino. Al Pacino and Robert De Niro have been battling it out in Hollywood for, f- what, 40 years? Like Michael yeah. Corleone and Vito Corleone and Godfather 2, De Niro has just announced got a kid on the way. Now Pacino's got a kid on the way. He's 82. He's got a 29-year-old girlfriend. Th- these guys are – like who's next? Robert Duvall? Like who? Who, who is no, the next? No, Jack Jack Nicholson. Or what's or that? Jack, Jack Nicholson. Yeah. Did yeah. you see him at the Laker game a few weeks ago? What kind of oh pants were he wearing? What Jack was he wearing? Pants. I don't know His what hair. He, was doing. <laughs> he looked like he was sleeping on the on the sidelines. He yeah. was out of it, man. How old is he though? He's, he's older than 80s. those guys. Is oh he yeah, 80s? he's he's well. Like I don't think he's been out in public in a long time. Like I think that was a, a first impression in the public sphere for Jack in a long time. And I think he crushed it personally. 86. And, no, he looked like – I don't know what was going on with the pants and the hair. Like, it yeah. just looked like he crawled out of a dumpster and rolled He's right into He's living his that. life, man. It was... Remember the shot? There were pictures that did come out at some point in the last couple of years where he was eating, like, like subs or something on a balcony. And people were like, look at this guy's life. Like, what a life. <laughs> Jack Nicholson has been leading. And, wow. uh, yeah, I guess Pacino and, and De Niro – you know that's that's just the way that's the way it goes in Hollywood, man. That's yeah. the way it goes. Uh, all right, Brian Burke coming up in the next hour. We'll get his take on the upcoming Cup final. You know who he likes, Florida or Vegas. Brad Tree Living, he knows him well. Worked with him very closely, obviously in Calgary. What do the Leafs get with Tree Living? How does he see maybe Tree Living and Shanahan coexisting? Um, so we'll catch up with Brian and get his take on all of that. Jay's back in action tonight. Alec Manoa. 
back on the mound for the Jays. We'll tee that up with Steve Phillips later this afternoon. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN 2.